Hi everyone, welcome to another of my quick Avid tutorials. And the thing I want to talk about today is bin views and kind of options for just how things display in your bins. And I'm going to say a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you today is stuff that you do not need to edit and work in Avid. I honestly didn't learn about some of these features till I had been using Avid for probably way longer than I should have before I learned about them. But my point is they're not necessary, but there's some things that can make your life easier, quicker, make your workflows a little smoother and just make things customized to work the way that you want, which is one of the things I do love about Avid is how customizable all the options are to fit your user style. First off, a real quick thing, just to show you, I'm right clicking on, on a bin here and you'll see there is this option for set bin display. And this is just to show you which things are being displayed or not within your bin. I will say I pretty much always just leave these on the default because the things that I want to see, master clips, linked clips, sub clips, sequences, effects, and motion effects are the things that I do want to see in there. And I don't necessarily want to see all my pre-compute clips and all my media files and stuff like that. So I generally don't mess with this. I'm just letting you know it's there. But the main thing I wanted to show you is about the bin displays. So I'm going to just widen this out here so you can see a little bit more. And there's nothing particularly special about this bin. I just opened up a demo project and this is a bin that happened to be in it. So first off, there's these bin views up here and you can see I can switch between these. So custom, go to editing and you can see what it's changing is what columns are displayed at the top here and then all the information for them and what order some of those are in. So these are different presets for what things you are looking at in your bin and what things you are not. So in this case, the simplest one I have here is this one is just custom. You see the only thing it's showing there is the color, the type of clip it is, and the name. There's no other information displayed. Very stripped down and simple. Or you can go to some of these other ones that have more things shown. In this case, a bunch of empty things, but I have those options for what do I want to see in here. So these presets are great. They're actually, I think, pretty useful and I use a bunch of them, but sometimes you might want a display that isn't one of these presets and has things that you specifically want to see in a particular way you're working or a particular project. And so you can customize all this as well, which is great. So let's say I want to make my own view here. I'm going to point something out to you. There is this option down here for save as, and we're going to use that, but I'm not going to use it right now. I think this is actually a little simpler if I kind of set up my view first and save it rather than like creating a new view and then trying to save that just the way that this interface is set up. The really useful thing here, I'm going to base this off film because why not, is choose columns. So I use this all the time, not just when I'm making specific presets, but sometimes I just temporarily want to take a look at something and this is really handy to be able to go into. So I right clicked on the bin, hit choose columns, and this is going to show me all the different things that could be displayed in the bin. And you'll see there are a ton of them, right? These are all different things that I could choose to see these columns or not see them. And I'll actually say there's even more than this possible. So depending on what footage you have, what kind of camera you were shooting on, some cameras will record additional metadata that will also show up as potential columns. I can say right now I'm working on something where a lot of the footage was shot on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, and that records I didn't count, probably another, I don't know, 30 or 40 extra columns of data that you can choose to display that I usually leave turned off because I don't care about most of the stuff that it has there, but it can have all that additional information. So you might even see more things here depending on what your footage is and what's in the bin. But just to kind of show you how this works, all the blue ones are the ones that are highlighted. So these are things that are being shown right now. And I'm just going to change some of these. So let's say I'll turn off these. Let's say I want to know my sort of what the project is. Maybe I was labeling my reels, so I want a reel number. A couple things that I do often find useful, offline, this will tell me if I have any clips that are offline right now where I'm missing the media. That can be good to know if something's not showing up to just be able to see that quickly, see which clips are missing and which are not. Let's say my frames per second I wanna see, I wanna see in to out, so how long is selected on the clip right now. And let's say format, that's all good. And anything else? I'm gonna turn off camera roll, why not? You can tweak this. I'm not suggesting use these specific things that I'm all using. I'm just showing you these are all options and a couple of things I wanted to point out that I often do find useful. Audio bit depth and audio sample rate, depending on where the media came from, sometimes I wanna be able to check that and just make sure things are matching up correctly. Okay, so let's say this is the set of things that I want and I didn't go through this in detail and check all of them, but okay. So I'll hit okay. 
And that updated my display, so now you can see there's some other columns showing over here that weren't before. You can see I turned on frames per second, so that's showing up. Here's that offline column. You can see I actually have a couple clips here that are offline, and we can see that. So if I you know, double click on one of these, it'll tell me, media offline. So I could have done that, but this way I immediately know, hey, these three clips are offline, everything else is online, because I can see that right here. Here's my audio bit depth, okay. And I can also move these things around so let's say that I really want to see, you know, what the name of the clip is and the start time code of the clip. Let's say I just want to start out with those things and have those kind of front and most visible. Maybe I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. And the other thing I'll point out to you over here, you'll notice when I scroll this, this right half is scrolling. The stuff that's on the very left here is not. I can set that to using this little cursor at the top here. So if I really only just ever want to keep the name visible all the time and everything else can scroll, I can move that over there and you'll see it puts a break point right there. For those of you who are familiar with Microsoft Excel, this is the same as freeze panes in there. Also, side note, apologies for the background noise. The people across the street just decided to start like trimming down all their hedges as I was recording. Say Levy. So I can adjust that and you can see now I can get this wider or I could say, you know, actually I, I do always want to see the name and the start and what tracks are in there. I can do that and scroll this like this. You know, if there's something else that I knew I wanted to see, you know, let's just say I want to know what format things are in. I can move that all the way back over here and say, you know, then let's move this and just keep the format and the name and everything else can kind of scroll, but I'll always be able to see those over here in the lot. I personally usually just leave the name. I always want to know like what was the clip that this was associated with as I'm scrolling through other things, just a little easier for me to look, but whatever works for you, you have the power. Now I've done those. Let's say I like this setting and I want to save this as a preset. You'll notice up here where this had said film and I was using the film preset, it now has film 0.1 because it's changed and it's also in italics. This is kind of letting me know that his was based on film, but you've changed something, this is different. So now that I've done this, now is where I'm going to go to save as and save this view. And instead of saving it as film one, I'll just call it like Mark demo view. Give it something useful in the name. If this is a view you're going to want to use when you're editing or when you're working with footage from a particular camera, whatever you have it set to, name it something with that. I'm just naming it this so I remember to go and delete this in a minute because this view is just sort of random and I don't really want to keep it around on my profile. I'll hit OK. And there we go. And so now if I switch to some other view, Let's go back to that one that had almost nothing in it, this custom one, okay. And they say, actually, let me go back to this one that I had. You can see everything comes up kind of immediately as I had it with everything in the same order. And I can see all those same options that I had. So really handy way to adjust your views. And then last thing I wanna show you related to this is if I pull up my settings, so command comma, under user settings, you see here's all my bin views. And these are all stored with my user profile. So again, if I move this user profile to a different computer or if I go into a different project and I'm still using the same user profile, I have all of these saved. And in this case, if I said, you know, here's this one I created before that I don't actually want, I can just delete it and that's out of my profile. If I wanted to create an additional view in here, I could also do that. So let's say I wanted to make something that was based off film again, I just command D duplicate it. And now I have this other view in here. And I could double click on that and you'll see it shows me the columns there so I could make my changes here and that's another way to create a different bin view. So I just made this one film one now that is available and you see when I go in here it has these auxiliary time codes that I just turned on that I don't actually want but I turned on just to show you that's how it works. <laughs> That's a quick overview of bin views. Like I said, this isn't something you need to edit in Avid, but I do think it can make your workflows a lot more efficient if you know how to set these things, particularly just knowing where this choose columns thing is. That comes in handy all the time. And being able to make these preset bin views that are set up the way that you work for what you need to see in particular editing situations can be a real time saver. So that's it for today. Hope that was useful to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.